Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I am here to do the literary fiction book tag, which was just created by Jasmine over at Jasmine's Reads, and I think this is the first tag I've done in over a year. So I'm excited about this, and I think the questions are really interesting, so let's get right into it. The first question is how do you define literary fiction? And I think Jasmine's definition of literary fiction was spot on when she described it as fiction that has a focus on language and character and an exploration of the human condition with less of an emphasis on plot. And I would agree that that emphasis on craft is probably what most defines literary fiction for me. I would also say that there is an aversion to formula in literary fiction that separates it from genre fiction, where genre fiction is often operating within an expected formula or framework, literary fiction is not. And where genre fiction has a certain contract with the reader to deliver some degree of satisfaction or entertainment or a particular kind of ending, literary fiction, I would say, has a contract with the reader to deliver satisfaction through excellent writing, thematic texture, and nuanced characters. To be totally reductive about it, I would say that genre fiction is more a great story well told, while literary fiction kind of lives and dies on the quality of its writing, and I would say the degree to which it digs into the human condition, which is why I think sometimes literary fiction can have that reputation of being difficult or self-serious. One question I would like to pose is, do you consider certain classics as falling under the umbrella of literary fiction? Because according to my very cursory internet research, the term literary fiction really only came into common usage in the mid 20th century, and in my experience it's often used to refer to contemporary books. So would you classify something like Jane Eyre as literary fiction? Because it certainly meets all of the qualifications just discussed, but I guess in my mind I've always kind of thought of it as being a classic or falling under Victorian literature. And I only mention this because it was a question I ran into while I was trying to choose books for the following questions. For example, the second question is name a literary fiction novel with a brilliant character study. And the first book that immediately came to mind for me was Villette by Charlotte Bronte which absolutely takes place entirely in the mind of its protagonist, Lucy Snow, who is quiet and reserved and overlooked in her everyday life, but whose consciousness is aflame with desires and observations and assessments of the world and people around her. So it's a fascinating look at one character's inner life and psychology, but it was also written in 1853. So does it qualify as literary fiction? I don't know, probably not. So my more appropriate pick for this question is The Idiot by Elif Bottomen, which, perhaps not coincidentally, is kind of a latter-day villette in many ways. Its narrator, Selin, is an awkward Turkish-American freshman at Harvard in the 90s who's just kind of trying to figure everything out. Like Lucy Snow, she's a bit of a wallflower, not very sure of herself, and she's much more of an observer than an actor, always kind of a half of a step removed from the things happening around her. And what this book captures beautifully is the uncertainty and stupidity of youth, that time of life when you're wrestling with these desires that you don't completely understand, when you're trying to figure out who you are and what's meaningful. And while I can understand why some readers may find Celine to be a very frustrating character, to me she is so recognizable and real and a kind of flesh and blood 19 year old. And her character development and the ways in which she grows and doesn't grow, changes and doesn't change, felt so so true to me. The next question is name a literary fiction novel that has experimental or unique writing. And I have to say I'm not particularly drawn to experimental literary fiction, so my options for this are somewhat limited, but for me the obvious choice is Milkman by Anna Burns. I've heard the language in this novel described as quite stream of consciousness, and while I wouldn't say it's stream of consciousness in the modernist sense, it does have a very loose and liquid feel to it. Sentences run on, the narrative often flows from one scene to another and then will circle back to the original scene or an earlier scene in a way that I think very effectively incorporates the thoughts and memories of the narrator 
into her present active experiences. And in addition to that, the language in this book has a very colloquial and local feel to it. It's set in Belfast in the 1970s and it sounds like it. And there is a lack of proper nouns in this book that I think in any other book might feel like an affectation, but here it feels very natural and kind of beautifully evokes the very insular quality of the community being depicted. And I think that's why I enjoyed the writing in Milkman so much, kind of to my surprise, because where a lot of experimental writing often feels quite affected and effortful and self-conscious to me, the writing here just feels incredibly natural and organic to the story being told. Next up is name a literary fiction novel with an interesting structure, and for this one I'm going to go with Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday because it is quite notably a novel made up of two seemingly unrelated stories. The first about a young woman living in New York who's having an affair with an older Philip Roth-esque writer, and the second about an Iraqi American man who is being detained at Heathrow Airport while trying to visit his missing brother in Iraq. It's quite unusual, but I would say that the structure and the kind of subtle ways that these two disparate stories are tied together is the most interesting thing about this novel, and if you want to know more about that, I'm going to link my full review to it down below. Question 5 is name a literary fiction novel that explores social themes. So many different novels could fit for this question, so it's kind of difficult to choose, but I am going to go with The Vegetarian and Human Acts, both of which are by South Korean author Han Kong. The Vegetarian explores feminism and gender dynamics and issues of mental health and bodily autonomy in South Korea, while Human Acts follows several characters in the years after the Gwangju uprising that took place in South Korea in the spring of 1980, and the stories in that novel look at the social and psychological and human toll of political corruption and state-sanctioned violence against citizens. The next question is named a literary fiction novel that explores the human condition. And again, because one of the definitions of literary fiction is fiction that explores the human condition, almost any book would fit for this question. But instead of a novel, I am going to go with the work of a short story writer, and that is, of course, none other than Alice Munro. I don't think I've actually read any Alice Munro since joining BookTube, but I've read the entirety of her selected short stories, 1968 to 1994, along with a few others, and she is just brilliant. And what's incredible about her stories is they are quite narrow in scope. They almost always follow a female character, they almost always take place in a small town somewhere in Ontario or in the kind of Vancouver region, and the conflict in her stories is almost small or domestic or provincial, so to speak. But even within these seemingly limited parameters, she is able to distill these fundamental truths about the human heart that just knock the wind out of you. And one of my favorite examples of that is this line from one of her stories called Walker Brothers Cowboy, where a girl of about 10 or 11 starts to realize that her father had a life before his children, and that that life contains secrets and desires and disappointments that she will never fully understand. I feel my father's life flowing back from our car in the last of the afternoon, darkening and turning strange, like a landscape that has an enchantment on it making it kindly, ordinary, and familiar while you are looking at it, but changing it, once your back is turned, into something you will never know, with all kinds of weathers and distances you cannot imagine. And if that isn't the perfect description of the unknowability of other people, I don't know what is. Next up is name a brilliant literary hybrid genre novel. I have a few choices for this. First, I have Normal People by Sally Rooney, which I would contend is a romance novel almost to a T, bar the ending, kind of. And I have a full video explaining my thoughts on that, and I stand by those thoughts. And I also would say that one of the reasons I think that book is doing so well and selling so many copies is that it's basically a romance novel. I would also say Kindred by Octavia Butler, which is a literary sci-fi novel with elements of historical fiction thrown in. This was written in the 1970s and follows a black woman named Dana who is sent back to the antebellum South to save the life of her white slave-owning ancestor over and over again. And lastly, I don't know if sports novel is an actual genre, but I would say that 
that Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese is a very literary sports novel. Not only does this book have some spectacular descriptions of the game of hockey that are just a thrill to read, but it also looks at some pretty intense social issues. Namely, the Canadian residential school system that was in place up through the 1990s and that separated Indigenous children from their families and was designed to place them in an environment that would strip them of their culture and language and community. And this book follows a boy who is placed in a residential school and it looks at the impact that has on his sense of identity and his relationship with Canada and with the sport of hockey, which is a game that he loves, but also a game that is very much a national sport that represents a lot of complicated and sometimes very ugly things. And the last question is what genre do you wish was mixed with literary fiction more? And for this I would have to say romance. Not that there isn't a lot of high quality romance out there, but I would love to have a little more literary romance in the vein of Sally Rooney. Something with just really spot on dialogue, social observations, some swoon worthiness, and maybe slightly more complicated or nuanced sources of conflict. I think that when romances or relationships are depicted in literary fiction, it's often looking at complications in relationships or toxic relationships or the breakdown of a relationship, which is all very interesting, but I would definitely love to see more literary writers tackling the process of falling in love, the thrill and dizziness of that experience, because I for one love to read that stuff when it's really well done, so would love to see more of it. That's all the questions. Thanks so much to Jasmine for making this tag and for tagging me. If you have responses to any of these questions, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. And in the meantime, I am going to tag a few people. Kazin at Always Doing, Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading, Sarah at Hardcover Hearts, and Natalie at Curious Reader. I would love to hear all of your answers to these questions. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!